thanks chairpersons <coughs> and dr banshi for inviting me and this is my topic about oral semaglutide which you are all aware of this is a presentation which is prepared and supported by novo nordisk now if we look at the management of diabetes after the discovery of insulin uh for so many years our all treatment were focused about insulin whether it is stimulated by drugs or or given exogenously and then in last 20 years we realized that there is another very important hormone that is glp1 though the concept of incretin was known since long but it was 91 92 around that time when the glp1 was first discovered and this was a molecule which become very early in therapy just in 13 years it became a treatment that was exenatide which we are well aware of and now this is the first protein hormone which has come as a oral pill that is what is the biggest discovery which has happened and we are now having a good experience of using oral semaglutide in last 7 8 months so i'm going to talk about this molecule little more in detail <coughs> so we know that insulin and glp1 both are the good treatment options for treating our patients with diabetes with their individual differences and benefits and when glp1 receptor agonists were launched first around 15 16 years ago they were originally derived from the well known hila monster exendin molecule and that's why they were exendin based structures and then subsequently the human glp1 recombinant technology was created and that's how now we have human glp1 based therapies so in general glp1 therapy can be broadly classified into exendin based and human glp1 based and why this classification is needed because in subsequent cardiovascular outcome studies what has been observed is the benefit the cardiovascular benefit lies only with human glp1 not with the exendin based because those trials were neutral while human glp1 based outcome trials had shown the cardiovascular benefit of glp1 and in this slide you can see another important aspect that is the molecular weight of different human glp1 based and you can see here specifically that liraglutide and semaglutide are smaller molecule and that's how in this world when we talk about lot of other benefits particularly cardiovascular benefits and because of these advantage it is the human glp1 based therapy which has taken over and among them also if the molecular size is small it has its own additional benefit particularly in terms of weight loss which has been found more with a smaller molecule like liraglutide and semaglutide we all know that the glp1 once secreted from intestinal l cells it is inactivated very fast because the two amino acids are removed from this glp1 by dpp4 and that's how it gets inactivated so these are the two molecules which were created like human glp1 but they are longer acting some modification was done and a fatty acid was added and when this fatty acid added glp1 which is liraglutide when it is injected obviously now this molecule gets bind to albumin and that's how it cannot be cleared so fast by dpp4 and that's how it works nearly for 24 hours and that's how once a day first in class molecule which we are using till last year was liraglutide it is being uh, is still one of the popular glp1 receptor agonist but the big change was semaglutide because it is oral and we all understand the importance of a injectable versus oral the patient acceptance etc etc 
And when it comes to uh, oral delivery of protein molecule, I think the most fascinating is insulin. So many years we are waiting for a oral insulin, but we could not achieve yet because of so many factors in our intestine which interfere in the protein absorption. And that's how insulin, though, though we are working since long and we are listening about oral insulin possibility, but looking to all this information, I still feel that it will be a big challenge. While with GLP-1, since number one, we require a small quantity of GLP-1. And secondly, there is no need of connecting with the meals because insulin has to rise and fall appropriately. This condition is not required with GLP-1. And that's how it is always there is a possibility to create an oral GLP-1 provided some special things are done and it was done with molecule semaglutide. And that's how it is possible to make it get through in a small quantity from intestine. Just few important points I want to show you here in this molecular structure, which we clinicians should understand. You can see here it ate one amino acid mentioned is amino butyric acid. This is not an amino acid which we have in our food. So this is an amino acid when it is changed here. This is the point where DPP4 enzyme works. And now you replace the amino acid. Alanine is replaced by AIB, so now DPP4 cannot work on this molecule. And that's how it becomes longer acting, by lysine uh, connected with fatty acid, made it further longer acting, and that's how its half-life is approximately one week. And this semaglutide was initially launched as an injectable preparation. Since half-life one week, because of these molecular alteration, so the injection frequency was also once a week. And then subsequently it was thought that can we do something because this molecule is going to last longer time, then can it be converted into an oral molecule? So the next work is started and that's how this is a big discovery that we have now oral semaglutide available. And obviously there are many advantages because of its very long half-life. So these are the various advantages. Now how to make oral semaglutide possible? So one another molecule that is called snack or sodium amino caproic acid is selected and these together are fixed up in a pill. And that's how it is made possible to have a desired absorption of GLP-1 in form of semaglutide. So this happens primarily with semaglutide, where this semaglutide and another molecule, SNAC, is combined in one pill. And that's how this oral semaglutide is available. We are all aware about the diabetes effects as well as cardiovascular benefit effect of the injectable semaglutide. If we look at oral semaglutide, it is exactly the same molecule, just the mode of delivery is different. It is parenteral versus this is oral. And that's how this oral semaglutide is created. What this snack is doing? When snack is combined with semaglutide, snack is a molecule which has few specific tasks. It will increase the pH in the surrounding area. And we know that in the stomach there is a very low pH and in that environment this protein molecule can be degraded by the enzymes lying there. So if patients swallow this pill, it is creating an increased pH in the surrounding region. And then it is causing a small transcellular absorption. So the semaglutide is not getting absorbed from intestine, duodenum, jejunum, no. Semaglutide is primarily getting absorbed from stomach. And that has been proven in various uh, venous collection studies that the vein which is draining through stomach is carrying this semaglutide. Now, if we want that this protein should get absorbed, so since there are so many challenges in a protein absorption, that's how these recommendations are mentioned on the label. 
that this pill should be taken with a small quantity of water. And here they have tried different quantity, right, from 50 ml to 300 ml water, a small 50 ml to up to one glass of water. Then different timings that how long patients should not eat anything, 30 minutes, one hour, two hour, and these kind of trials have already been done. And after that, the conclusion was that if patient drinks or swallows this pill with a small quantity of water, which can be around 100 ml, and if doesn't eat for around 30 minutes, or now if time can be longer, if the time goes longer, absorption will be slightly better. And that's how these are the recommendations that we always instruct our patient that when they wake up in the morning, the first task is to swallow this pill with a small quantity of water, which is mentioned here, and not to eat or drink anything for 30 minutes. That's how this oral GLP-1 is going to get absorbed. And in Indian patients, I always uh, ask proactively these questions to them. Because many patients you will see in our practice will tell us that, doctor, when I wake up, I drink first two glasses of water. This is not to be done when a patient is prescribed oral semaglutide. They should take it with a small quantity of water, and after one hour, they are free to do whatever they want. It's available in three dosing strength, three, seven, and 14, and like with any other GLP-1. Other injectable also, we always gradually up titrate so that there are GI tolerance is good and the same rule is followed by oral semaglutide. It is prescribed with 3 milligram, then 7 milligram, and we can go up to 14 milligram. And we know that GLP-1 receptor agonist, apart from a very effective glucose lowering agent, they are very important weight loss agent and that's how this therapy initially uh, became primarily very useful for obese type 2 diabetic patients. And then subsequently when the leader trial data came, then the cardiovascular benefit came up and all cause mortality and reduce mace etc we are all aware of. And then subsequently we are now getting information on these drugs in other benefits, including NASH, Alzheimer's disease, these are the new evolving areas. There are many areas where these drugs might have a role, and, and GLP-1 receptor agonist is becoming a very promising and important diabetes therapeutics because it is going to take care of many aspects. Many pathophysiological defects can be rectified with the help of GLP-1-based therapies. This is all physiology. We know what GLP-1 is doing on, in our body. Just a very quick review of the trial data on oral semaglutide. And the trials which are done with the oral semaglutide were labeled as the pioneer trials. And a good number of patients, including patients from India, have participated. And I'm also... Uh, I have also been part of few of these oral semaglutide trials, including now the currently ongoing cardiovascular outcome trial that is the sole trial that also I am the part of. You can see here Pioneer 8 that was aid on insulin trial. This I, I was also part of this trial and this was we did this around 3-4 years ago and those days we had seen the benefit of oral semaglutide in patients of type 2 diabetes being treated with insulin therapy. So all, all kind of the trials, including comparison with SGLT2, even comparison with the injectable liraglutide, all these studies already have been done. And if you look at the dark blue line, the navy blue line, that is the HbA1c lowering effect of oral semaglutide. And you can see that if compared with any molecule, the HbA1c lowering effect is maximum in these studies and interestingly we can see that even with when it is compared with the liraglutide injectable its effects was better. In the first row fourth you can see pioneer 
four that was comparison with liraglutide also and there are reasons for that so it's a very effective glucose lowering agent and obviously higher is the hba1c more is the hba1c reduction and i consider glp1 receptor based therapies is in in a good number of patients equivalent to insulin therapy in terms of these are the most effective glucose lowering therapies there is no doubt about that and apart from glucose lowering and weight loss now gradually we are learning that they had cardiovascular benefits and these cardiovascular benefits already proven with most of the human glp1 based molecule including dulaglutide semaglutide injectable and liraglutide and the oral semaglutide cardiovascular trial that is soul trial is still ongoing though we have some cardiovascular trial data from a, a small uh, trial which was pioneer 6 and then subsequently now we are learning that because of their mode of action they are beneficial in terms of hepatic renal etc there are multiple mechanisms about the cardiovascular benefit and as you are all aware if you look any international guideline they say that any patient who has predominant atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease prefer a glp1 receptor agonist with proven benefit and with proven benefit means all these human glp1 receptor agonist which has shown proven benefit there are multiple mechanisms and these mechanisms are direct and indirect including their direct vascular effects so that's how these drugs are getting a place not only in diabetes management but also diabetes and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and there the prevention of recurrence of the atherosclerotic cardiovascular events as far as the big cvot is concerned that is the soul trial which is still ongoing and it is already on since around 2 years maybe in next one or two years data will be out once the event number reach this is pioneer 6 trial which was on a smaller number of patients done just to prove the cardiovascular safety not the superiority but in this trial it is cardiovascular safe though there is a decrease in cardiovascular event but it is not statistically significant because the the number of participants was less in this trial and the objective of this trial was different so this pioneer trial had shown cardiovascular benefit cardiovascular mortality benefit all cause mortality benefit similar to the lines which we have observed in injectable semaglutide and liraglutide we all know that GLP-1 receptor agonist had shown specifically a good benefit in stroke reduction. Why it happens? There can be multiple benefits, but one more hypothesis is there, which is vagal mediated effect apart from their other effects in terms of vascular benefits. So, so many cardiovascular risk factors can be taken care with the help of GLP-1 receptor agonist. one big barrier particularly in our country till was it's being injectable but now since this therapy has also become oral so at least that barrier can be very easily taken care and we know that in clinical trial setting in in real world setting this weight loss can be can be any number in clinical trial setting this is the weight loss hba1c reduction some reduction in systolic blood pressure and and reduction in central obesity has been observed these are the all ideal patients for oral semaglutide anybody who wants a weight loss good diabetes control good cardiovascular benefit somebody who already had a cardiovascular event these are good candidates and obviously there is no risk of hypoglycemia so a good therapy for younger patients as well and and all these trials have shown benefit and safety and this already i had discussed so so this is the positioning 
of oral semaglutide and it feels that looking to the mode of action and convenience and that's how they call it as a game changer molecule. I call it as a game changer because it is the first protein molecule which is now available as a pill. Thank you very much.